Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. I'm just continuing my little trek through the forest here, and uh, there's nothing really interesting to report, to be honest. Which, you know, that's what it's like 90% of the time when you're out exploring. There's just lots of like thorns and prickly bushes to walk through, which kind of sucks. Anyways, in today's video I wanted to talk about a video clip I recently saw. I think it first came out back in 2009 of uh, David Attenborough being interviewed on some British television show. And the guy at the end of the video clip asks him, you know, what does he think of mythical creatures? You know, cryptozoological creatures. And uh, at first he kind of touches on the Loch Ness Monster saying he doesn't believe the Loch Ness Monster could possibly be real. Um, you know, a creature like that, there would have to be so many of them and they're so massive. You know, if it was something like an ichthyosaur or a plesiosaur, it would need a lot to sustain itself and, you know, multiple specimens. And, and like Loch Ness is landlocked. That's why it's called Loch Ness. You know, it's not like it's fed by the ocean. So there's no way for things to really get in and out. But uh, on the subject of Sasquatch and the Yeti, oh, on the subject of Sasquatch and the Yeti, um, surprised to see that he believes it could definitely be a thing. Like it could be something that actually exists. So. For someone like David Attenborough, somebody who's been studying the wilderness and, uh, you know, all the different, you know, bioregions around the world, studying wildlife on every continent, basically. It's interesting that someone like that, someone so high profile, would go out and say that, yeah, it is possible that Sasquatch could exist. And he specifically says, you know, the tracks are very interesting. And, uh, you know, as we know, Sasquatch tracks, at least the ones that we think to be legitimate, are very convincing and show, you know, signs of, you know, it being an actual living, breathing creature. Things like dermal ridges and the mid-tarsal break and just weird deformities in the foot, uh, you know, between specimens. You know, that just kind of shows that there's got to be something real and living out there leaving these tracks. And so... You know, just the tracks alone are enough to convince David Attenborough that Sasquatch could be real. Yet with other scientists, for some reason, it's not enough. You know, someone like Jeff Meldrum, that guy's been studying Sasquatch tracks for decades. He has a huge collection of Sasquatch tracks, ones that, you know, couldn't really be faked. Maybe nowadays they could be faked, but a lot of these ones were were uh, cast a long time ago and they contain certain characteristics that only something like a living breathing creature could you know leave behind um i know jane goodall as well she believed that sasquatch could definitely exist and um i believe she was actually friends with John Bindernagel and she had made that statement it might actually be in his book as well that statement that she said where she said that so all these high-profile naturalists and conservationists um, do believe Sasquatch could could be a real thing and I think that says a lot. I think that means more scientists and like PhDs and academics should be looking into it and not just casting it aside because it's weird and like a fringe topic. I mean, at this point, there's so much evidence out there. Like it's almost unbelievable how they're denying it and, you know, saying it probably doesn't exist. Like the evidence is there, physical evidence, trace evidence, images videos it's all out there and for the most part it's being ignored by the people who shouldn't be ignoring it 
So anyways, down below in the description, I'll put a link to that video where you can watch the interview and the part that pertains to the Yeti and cryptozoology is more towards the end of the clip. So if you don't want to watch the whole thing, you can just skip to that part. But man, like David Attenborough has been exploring nature his whole life. The guy's 95 years old, you know, and he's still studying wildlife and, and uh, making documentaries. And a lot of his work is on Netflix. So if you aren't really familiar with David Attenborough, uh, you can check out his documentaries. Like he used to narrate the Planet Earth series on BBC. He's also the brother of famous actor Richard Attenborough, who, uh, I don't know. I watch a lot of old movies. Like one of my old favorite movies is The Great Escape. And uh, Richard Attenborough, his brother, actually stars in that movie. So. Just something to think about, you know, something interesting. You know, if, if these people who are like wildlife experts and nature experts are willing to go out and say that, then, you know, all these PhDs and people who laugh at people who research Bigfoot should be also open to the possibilities because, you know, <laughs> they should know better. You think like a scientist would be into discovering new things and exploring. And, you know, potentially discovering something and confirming it to be real, something that hasn't been proven to exist. You, you think that they'd be all over that and they would want to be a part of that. But Sasquatch and Bigfoot and the Yeti, they have this strange, like, I don't know. People just think it's weird. And people think it's just kind of silly. And sometimes, well, a lot of times, actually, Bigfoot is made out to be a joke. And so they're too scared to be a part of that, which is sad. You know, it's a good thing, though, we have the people at Ohio DNR coming, kind of coming out and uh, giving Bigfoot a little bit of love. So anyways, that's all I really wanted to say. Go check out the uh, David Attenborough interview video. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you next time on Mountain Beast Mysteries.